14,000 feet of challenging snow-capped rock. Along sheer walls and high stone cliffs, a steep and winding roadway has been blasted into the mountaintop. Here is a natural testing ground, and what a testing ground. For 16 years, the best autos that man produced have battled for supremacy in the national hill climb race. It took the first man who climbed the peak two days to reach the top. Today, it takes the average motorist an hour or so. Three stock Ford B8 Roadsters did it in less than 20 minutes, but it's a grueling, punishing contest every foot of the way. Three veterans are ready to start. Here is Glenn Schultz. And this is Angelo Shimino. And this is Bus Hammond, all driving Ford B8 cars. And this year, they shattered existing stock car record for the climb. All three of the Ford B8s were strictly stock cars, with optional equipment consisting of cylinder heads with a higher compression ratio, carburetor jets, and bypass valves available for high-altitude driving. American Automobile Association technicians put seals on each car to ensure conformity with stock car requirements. And they're off! Hammett is over the mark first, closely followed by Cimino, and then by Schultz. The course is lined on every side with spectators attracted by the promise of Thrill's gore as they scale the heights. Schultz takes the lead, closely followed by Cimino. Oh, look at those boys digging on the turns, and how those be able. You know, most of the race is run on low gear, with motors turning as fast as 4,200 revolutions a minute. At times, the cars reach a speed of 60 miles an hour. The skilled drivers shift gears at the turns from second to low speed without lifting a foot off the accelerator. Every minute, every step of the way is a searching test for engine, car, and driver. It takes plenty of skill and plenty of nerve to keep the accelerator on the floorboards, utilizing every ounce of surging eager power that flows back from the superb B8 engine. A miscalculation is no small matter, for in many spots, sheer cliffs drop away from the road ride a thousand feet or more. If ever anybody needed complete control of a car, these drivers, and they have it. The marvelously responsive Ford B8 answers to every touch. Here's a car to trust. You may never climb Pike's Peak, but absolute control means something to you, too, in the car you drive. Can these Fords V8 take it? Watch them straighten out after the hairpin turns and pull up a grade that keeps the driver looking straight through the windshield at blue sky. The course follows a route 12 miles and 2,200 feet long. The finish line is more than 5,000 feet higher than the starting point. Here is the test for carburetor and cooling system. Imagine running your car at full throttle for 12 miles, pulling every step of the way in second or low gear. At high levels, water boils more quickly, and yet none of these Fords had any trouble with overheating. Here is a reserve in temperature control that adds much to Ford V8 performance. Under the 3A rules, carburetor adjustments must not be made during this drive from a 9,000 foot elevation to 14,000 feet and more. An almost perfect fuel mixing and distributing system is necessary to travel through such rapidly changing atmospheric conditions. Remember, these engines at times during the climb turn more than 4,200 times a minute according to tachometer records, and that's really moving. Bus Hammond, youngest of the three drivers of the 48s, finished first, covering the course in 19 minutes, 25 and 7 tenths seconds, nearly 40 seconds below the mark set by a six-cylinder car a year ago to win the title. Schultz and Cimino each better the 1933 mark by more than 13 seconds. Most of the course is above the timber line. Halfway up, the driver sees snow on rocks and the roadway. And once again, the Ford V8 demonstrates its speed, stamina, and power. You may need it only once during the car's life, but if you drive a Ford V8, you know it's there when you want it. Endurance means lasting performance and sound quality. And now the trio flashes over the finish line. Hammond, Hammond is the winner, and not far behind him is Chimino. And bringing up the rear, only because he went off the road onto the rocks to avoid hitting a spectator, Schultz, nine times winner of the climb, comes in last, but the 1933 record. The three drivers parade their mounts in front of the observation tower as a gesture of triumph over Old Man Mountain. No wonder they are proud of themselves and their cars. Oh, it was a great race. Ah, the victor's smile. And here are the fruits of victory in the shape of a huge silver cup offered by Spencer Penrose.
The cup becomes the property of the 1934 winner until some faster car comes along. And when that day comes, we are ready to venture the prediction that it will be another Ford V8, still the fastest, finest, and most dependable car in the field.